Today, my co-author and I, Dave Snow, were pleased to release a paper on assisted reproduction technology policy in Canada. Here's the current situation. In 2010, the Supreme Court struck down most of a comprehensive federal statute regulating all aspects of assisted reproductive technology policy. Most of the regulatory aspects of that policy are now in the province's court. We have a little bit of a vacuum, legislatively speaking. This leads people to fear that we might have octomom phenomenon. That's the woman in the U.S. who gave birth to eight children simultaneously from in vitro fertilization, that 70-year-old uh, women might be implanted with embryos and become mothers at the age when most women become grandmothers. Uh, these are the kinds of concerns that people are, are worried about, jurisdiction shopping, that kind of thing. In Canada, we've been fortunate that these problems haven't occurred because, in fact, we have a good deal of self-regulation by the medical profession. This is not to say that there couldn't be problems. Uh, significant problems might arise over time, and if government legislation or regulation is required, the ball is now in the province's court. They're the ones that are going to have to step in to take care of that. There's a model we can look to. We can look down under to Australia. Uh, that's also a federal system. Uh, it's highly decentralized in terms of who has responsibility for this policy area. It's all the states there. Nevertheless, through a variety of means, including intergovernmental cooperation and standards set by the medical profession itself, they've managed to get a good deal of uniformity. So our message to the provinces is that before problems begin to arise, they might want to take a look down under, get ready for some of these things, cooperate with each other, and introduce whatever regulatory frameworks make sense. I'm Reiner Knopf. This is the School of Public Policy. Thanks for watching.